So it's a bit of a mixed experience really that, you know, in terms of my career that led me into Chai with Lakshmi. It, 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 I would say it was, it was both serendipity and an accident, if, if, if I can use those words. So I've, I did about uh, seven years of social work and social research, worked in slums for the most part of it. I think I burnt out and I took a break from that and I started wondering what I want to do next. Um, stumbled into modeling by accident. I was sitting at a cafe coffee day, one of these, one day with friends and some people from Channel V walked in and asked me to audition. And uh, so I went in, you know, dressed up for the first time, which is a very different world to how it is when you're working in slums and, in, you know, in very ordinary clothes and trying to underplay your looks. Um, Interestingly, I got selected, one of the, of the 3,000 women from India who auditioned for Channel V in that year. I was one of the 14. And of course, I knew it, that I wouldn't make it past probably the first or second round. And I was the second one to be eliminated. You know, but of course, the, the, uh, the experience stayed with me in terms of the kind of exposure it, it had given me. Uh, how to do my makeup, how to walk, what kind of clothes to wear. I was beginning to learn about these things. Um, so I toyed with Ramp for the next few years. Um, towards the end of like my third year in modeling, I kind of figured that I didn't really want to do this long term, um, at least not full time, uh, or maybe the right opportunities hadn't presented themselves to me. So I started looking at what next, what do I want to do in the long run? Um, got some counseling and advice from people, um, took a career break, went and did my postgrad in international marketing. And I loved it. I loved academics. So I started working at the business school. I uh, went on to teach over there. I did research as part of the business school. I consulted for local organizations. Um, this was in Sheffield. Um, came back to India, wondered what next. For the next two years, I kind of dabbled with things. And towards the end of the two years, I said, listen, I've got to figure this out now. You know? um, so I'd done social research and social work. I'd done modeling, which also led me into anchoring, and I had this marketing background, is there some way that I can put at least, that's a smart idea, <laughs> is there, you know, is there some way that I can put at least two things out of three together? And I said, well, I can put anchoring and marketing consulting together, and maybe interview some entrepreneurs, so that's really how it started. And that was, of course, a low-hanging fruit, that would, that would have been easy to do. Then I thought about it, and I went and did my first few interviews with a regular digi cam and I realized that this is going to be a hell of a lot of hard work and nobody's going to watch uh, a badly made video. So I had to invest and the more I thought about it, the more I started talking to people about it, I realized that I wanted to do something bigger. And I said, you know what, I'd love to see if I can become the Oprah Winfrey of India. You know? And that's really how Chai with Lakshmi came about. And of course, I think at that point in time, I didn't have the courage and the confidence to just maybe call it uh, call it some other show. So I looked for a cultural connect, as, as cheesy as Chai with Lakshmi might sound to some people. And how, as, as much as I've been uh, ridiculed for the fact that, you know, oh, like coffee with Karan, you have Chai with Lakshmi. Uh, I think Chai to me is much more Indian than coffee is. Uh, we are the largest producers of tea in the world. And, uh, you know, you think about it from a cultural point of view, you know, on a, on a regular day of work, you take a break, you sip a cup of chai, maybe on the street corner, five rupees, 10 rupees these days, maybe. You have a random, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you have a random conversation with uh, someone, either the chai wala or someone at the stop, and you walk away both refreshed from the tea and with some little piece of insight or, or a piece of humor that leaves you mentally refreshed too. So I said, let, let me play on that and say that I will make these short, crisp, lively videos for the web which are informative and I would purely sit in the infotainment space and that's really how it started. Uh, of course the show is today two years old and 114 episodes old and a couple of awards old too. Long answer to a short question. Actually I'm not sure, I'll tell you why because I think in my master's program uh, a lot of what I learned was traditional marketing. Definitely there was knowledge there in terms of research and strategy and that was important and that still is important. But much of what I'm applying today in my work is all in the digital space and these things I've learned in the last three years. I, I, you know, I did not have exposure to digital until three years ago and everything, you know, whether it's you know, about how Twitter works or analytics, YouTube communities, everything is what I've learned recently. I definitely think we could be doing a whole lot better 
in, in, in managing our online, online experience or the online experience that we're offering to our viewers, but it's a start. So when, when you're doing a show like this and it's about um, content that has to go out regularly, you know that you have to do those 40 or you know, 40, 50, 60 episodes of the next year or two years. So you're constantly on the lookout for individuals and stories that you think you know, are going to lead to a great conversation that's going to be interesting for the viewer. And you're constantly thinking about how do you present this story? You know, how much better can you present it? So to answer your question, it's a combination of me meeting people and hearing of people that I definitely want to have on my show. Me reading about people in the news or, you know, or uh, maybe reading a, a book that mentions them and saying that, yeah, that's the kind of person I want more on my show. Also, we have people writing in every day. We get like a dozen emails every day, people nominating people for the show. Oh, wow. So, of the nominations, we do pick few, but very few, because uh, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a certain criteria that, that the guest has to meet. And often I find that these awesome people are not people who talk too loudly about themselves. You know, somebody else talks about them. So, you know, and, and so the people who are nominating guests for the show are not they themselves, but somebody who's nominating somebody they know who's doing some amazing work, and that's how it is. I think this, wow, this is me, I, I'd love to do this for the rest of my life, only happened in the last uh, six to eight months. And that's a combination of things there. One is, the more I did this, the more I realized I was made to do this. The more I recognize things like, hey, when I want to imagine things, it's all colorful visuals in my head. It's never, you know, just a just a thought, a, a text. If someone's speaking to me, I'm, if I, I'm imagining it in, you know, in 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 three D in my head. Um, having a team that's extremely good at what it does, um, who pushed me to deliver better quality of content, uh, leaving me freer to think about, you know you know, who I'm bringing on the show rather than how I'm going to portray them. You know, these are factors that have helped me say that, yeah, this was meant to be. And also winning the Manton Award was a big deal for us. You know, these three things came together and I realized that, um, heck, I'd, you know, no matter how much of a struggle the first year and a half was, because this is a self-funded startup, um, it, it, it was definitely worth the journey and the amount of learning that I've had I don't think I would have anywhere else. That, that's very valuable to me. And the downside, yes. Um, when it comes to the downside, um, I think, again, you know, one of the factors, the, the fact that it is self-funded is both an upside and a downside, you know. Um, upside because you're the boss. You, you fall, you pick up, and you move on. No one's there to kick your ass. Um, you win, you, 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 know, you cheer the loudest. Um, and so do your friends and family for yourself. Um, the downside is also that as, as a lone leader at the top, you don't have co-founders to discuss things with it. And I think if I do a startup again, if I do another business, I would definitely want to look for people that, you know, that I, can, I can collaborate with and, and create things together with. Um, monetarily, of course, you know, like with any startup, you go, go through your ups and downs. There are good months and bad months. You're still stabilizing in the first few years. So I think, uh, um, I did have a little bit of a burnout once in between, but we're, we're good, we're good now. That's Absolutely, you know, video is, is big. Video is, is really, really big. Um, the, the world's second largest search engine is YouTube. I mean, what, what does that say? Um, video's gonna be consumed more, and there's, there's, there's interestingly, you can have both push marketing and pull marketing in video itself, and that's really fascinating. And the kind of infrastructure available in India today to syndicate videos and to deliver a video and a relevant ad to your audience where the audience is and not necessarily where you are. It's, it's, it's fascinating how that ecosystem has evolved and how, you know, how it's also mature and most of us don't even realize how, how sophisticated it is. Um, when it comes to video content, I think we need to go beyond looking at ads. Ads are great, you know, it's, 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 it's part of a campaign, it works. Now is the time where brands are owning content. You know, you've got to create um, concepts and deliver them in a way that works for your brand. So it's a sustained experience. And maybe here, cause marketing fits in really well. Um, a lot of other social um, um, social ideas, I think, fit in very well too. Um, even even gimmicks, you know, uh, um, 
Red Bull offers a fantastic example of how to use, how to leverage video um, and, and integrate, you know, the whole social media experience around video, around, around uh, an event. It, it, the possibilities are, are, are awesome. As a marketer, um, when I started looking at a, a cause or, or a campaign that I can run that was meaningful for my brand and would deliver value to the society that I was that I was creating content for, um, the the idea of Inclusive India came about, and it came about through actually one of my viewers, um, and that was a fascinating thing. You know, the idea is from the crowd, and we've just finished crowdfunding for the first phase of the project. So the project itself. Is a, is a mammoth effort to publish 1,000 real and positive stories um, or examples of how Indians are being inclusive. And to me, inclusivity sits uh, right as the foundation for the concept of universe, unity and diversity. Um, because if we don't look at what inclusivity means at a personal level, we'll never understand what unity and diversity means. Um, so when I, when I look for these 1,000 stories, or when my team and I look for these 1,000 stories and we write about them, we want people to read them and take away insights on what inclusivity means to them at a personal level, at a community level, at a uh, state policy level, um, and uh, of course as a, at, a, at a national level, what does it mean? And the whole you know, objective with Chai with Lakshmi and this campaign is about positive content. You know, there's enough news out there that's telling us what's going wrong, but if we can put more news out there that tells us what's going right, can we see more things going right? You know, that's, you know, that's the idea on which this whole concept is based. I don't know if I can honestly say that biking is a passion. I think, I think for me now, Chai with Lakshmi is my passion, and it's my, it's my life and my, it's my work. Uh, but yeah, biking used to be a, my passion. It used to be very integral to my identity. Um, so I didn't know how to cycle until I was 18. I learned cycle at the age, cycling at the age of 18. And then the only vehicle available after that to learn to ride and use in my social work days was a Bajaj Kawasaki, a 10-year-old Bajaj Kawasaki. So that's what I learned to ride. And you know, I did everything from grocery shopping to going to meetings to you know, delivering stuff to you know, people we had to deliver stuff to, to yeah, everything. I mean, that was my mode of commute. And I realized that, hey, it's better value for money. It gives me more mileage and it's uh, better balance. Um, so I said, you know, I'm never going to, excuse me. I said, I'm never going to ride um, a, a, a woman, women's scooter because it just didn't seem like it was as practical as a motorbike. So I was a sucker for practicality. Uh, so my next bike, which I owned, my first bike that I bought was um, a TVS Victor. And the longest ride I did, and this was, I think, back in uh, 2003, uh, was Bangalore, Chennai, and back on my own. And I was completely, had completely sunburnt arms, but that was fun. This was, this was the days when the cops were just getting TVS victors in, 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 you know, in the south. Uh, so I was mistaken for a cop, and I was, you know, it was free, it was okay, it was safe to ride those bikes then. Uh, and then I had a bullet. Uh, the longest ride I've done on a on my Thunderbird uh, is Bangalore Wynard, and that was as part of a riding club. I didn't do many solo rides on the bullet because I just seemed to draw a whole lot more attention and ruffle up a whole lot more feathers. Uh, I had cars and bikes, you know, um, what do you say, following me and chasing me and trying to strike up a conversation, even if I was completely geared up, you know, helmets, gloves, jacket with elbow pads, you know, riding shoes, didn't matter. They, they, it, was, it was almost like you know, somebody had edged them on and they had to figure this out, you know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a little while since I've ridden a bike, but that's about it.